Hey there. If you have already heard this, please skip forward. This is the intro description to the video parts for a page on my website. The page you are likely viewing this on will teach the basics of how to read the different types of plots and seismic charts people use. If there is anything I can add or any mistakes to be corrected, please do not hesitate to contact me. To aid people who have a harder time reading or just those who would rather watch a video, I am adding video versions to the different sections on my read, spectrogram, seismic plots, and more page, which resides under the how to drop down menu on my website. If you are viewing this on YouTube, please scroll to the description box below and click the link to the page. Here we are in the next section of my website on my page that I'm doing video sections about. In the how to drop down menu, click read spectrograms, seismic plots, and more. We already deal with how to read webby quarters, how to understand certain things about the UNAVCO boreholes, and about spectrogram plots. Now we're going to deal with how to read seismogram waveform plot. Waveforms are a very important aspect of seismological analysis. They can assist you in determining magnitudes, epicenters and hypocenters, earthquake types, different types of processes, and much more. I'm not going to show you how to read waveforms specifically, but instead waveform plots. Waveform plots are also sometimes called seismogram plots. Now remember, a seismogram is simply a line of data that was recorded by a seismic instrument, also known as a seismograph. Waveforms are what seismograms are made of. They show the way the ground moved in a particular direction, of course, depending on the direction of the ground motion that is recorded by the station or the channel. Therefore, assisting seismologists in determining causes of earthquakes and types of material below ground. Different types of seismic waves travel through material differently. This can aid scientists in discovering new pockets of magma, oil, or water. It can also aid seismologists in detecting very intricate processes that are taking place beneath our feet that would otherwise be hidden. Now a short period station, for example EHZ, shows vertical ground motion. That means when you are viewing waveforms for a short period vertical channel, up would be ground motion heading towards the surface, and down would be downwards motion. It also works the same way with horizontal channels. Remember horizontal channels usually end in E for east-west ground motion, or end in N for north-south ground motion. An earthquake appearing on, for example, an EHE station would record ground motion that occurred horizontally towards the east and towards the west. Having EHZ, EHE, and EHN stations when viewing earthquake waveforms allows seismologists to gain a type of 3D perspective of the event in question, furthering their understanding of how the seismic waves propagated away from the source. Here we see a clip of the possible magma resonance from the 2008-2009 Yellowstone Lake magma intrusion event from seismic station US LKWY 00 BHZ for December 29, 2008. The image right here is of a basic waveform plot. Waveforms are the most used type of seismic analysis and the most important. As always, please read all sides of the plot first before reading the data. Notice on the left, vertically, it says counts and shows both 5000 and minus 5000. Those are the amplitude counts for what you see within the analysis window within those specific horizontal marks. Time frame is of course recorded horizontally on the bottom. Remember how I said earlier that you can rarely ever see waveforms using the online webby quarters or heli quarters? Basically because there is too much per line with too small of an image. The incremental image directly below attempts to visualize this effect for you and we have it right here. Let me zoom out a little bit. So here's an image showing five incremental steps as I use the program Swarm to zoom out using the waveform analysis window. Please note the time frame changes. Now I'm not able to show the entire image because there's five plots and it goes well beyond the screen. But here's the first one right here. This is showing the same exact event. Notice that. Notice how it changes. Okay, so let's go back up and let's talk about it. Again, for the record, this low frequency earthquake shown here is the same as the one in the image just previously shown. No, so notice how in the first of the five waveform plots, it shows a total time period of about a whole minute. Notice that. Also notice how the last of the five waveform plots shows a total time period of about 20 minutes. Well, in the beginning, you can see how spread out the waveforms are. You notice that? allowing you to analyze this event and determine its characteristics. However, did you also see how the waveform details started to disappear only halfway down the image? Look at that. 
Just right here, it starts to disappear. At the end, this low-frequency earthquake looked like any other earthquake, but it was not like any other earthquake. This was done to visualize why the online web recorder should not be what you use to analyze seismic events. Again, the last waveform plot here shows a total time period of 20 minutes from start to finish. Most online web recorders, especially those from the University of Utah at Yellowstone, have 48 lines, in other words, 48 seismograms, with 30 minute per line constrained by pixels, because it is an image. That is why seismic analysis software is a must when determining things. But I believe the reason most people who are not actively creating a career in this field have not done this already is because they think it will take far too much time and is too confusing to understand. At the time of writing this, October 2018, updated late February 2019, I have only been analyzing seismic data for about six to seven months, so it really does not take that long to understand and get used to these programs and how to monitor volcanic and tectonic hazard areas with accuracy. Now actually locating epicenters, determining magnitudes, earthquake causes, among many other things, is much harder. However, this gives you a big fighting chance. So now you know how to analyze a waveform plot. Again, it's read from left to right, just like a book. And remember to always pay attention to the time periods at the bottom, the amplitude counts on the left, and any frequency filters that you may see. So did you know that waveforms can actually show frequency content? It's true. That is also why frequency filters can be added not only to spectrogram or spectra plots, but to waveform plots as well. Right here is another different low frequency event that was identified during the Yellowstone Lake 2008-2009 dike intrusion event. If they happen, happened before Yellowstone, excuse me, they can happen once again. Data retrieved from seismic station LKWY from December 29th, 2018. I did not mean to say 2018, I meant 2008. That is a typo and I'll fix that in a bit. As you can clearly see here, waveforms can show frequencies. I have each of the different frequencies here or different filters, excuse me. We have unfiltered, we have a low pass two hertz filter, then we have a high pass two hertz filter, and then we have a band pass 0 0.7 to 5.0 hertz filter. I never used to use filters, but now I do, and they're very, very helpful. And the fact that waveforms contain frequencies is something I actually did not know until I started analyzing seismic data in July of 2018. The above image contains four waveform plots, and that's the image I'm showing here. All waveform plots are showing the exact same event but with a frequency filter. Frequency filters are helpful in filter at, filtering out excuse me, certain frequencies that you do not want to see. So again, this is unfiltered, which means that the waveform plot contains no filter and shows all frequencies. This one has a 2 hertz low pass filter with this filter added and a 2 hertz maximum frequency set. The waveform plot only shows activity that occurred at 2 hertz and below. Next, we see a 2 hertz high pass filter, which works the opposite. With this filter added and 2 hertz minimum frequency set, the waveform plot only shows activity that occurred at 2 hertz and above. And down here we have a 0.7 hertz to 5.0 hertz band pass filter right here. With this filter added and 0.7 hertz to 5 hertz set, the waveform plot only shows activity that specifically occurred between 0.7 hertz and 5 hertz. Kind of getting the drift? So I guess that settles that. Waveforms can show frequency content. This is another reason, among many others, that waveforms in conjunction with spectrogram plots and frequency spectra plots are very powerful to use during the analysis of seismic data. This is why I love the freedom of being able to download data from virtually any area I want during any time I want, and then being able to actually analyze the data any way I want. <laughs> This truly gives people who wish to monitor volcanic and tectonic hazard areas a lot of freedom. Now that's it for learning waveform plots. Did I forget to add something or did I make a mistake? Please do not hesitate to let me know. Last but certainly not least, up next is how to read frequency spectra plots. This one is pretty easy so it'll be pretty short.